Hey everybody, Allison here. I am the Director of Risk Tolerance as well as an Options Trader here at Simpler Trading. And today I want to go ahead and take a look at Lulu. Now Lulu overall has seen a very nice move to the upside as we can see here with our trend. Our moving averages are stacked up, which are these orange lines here. The 10 period simple moving average is above the 30 which is this longer dashed line here, and both are above the 100. We can see the Bollinger Bands opening up, allowing for a continuation higher. We have momentum building up above the zero line, and on our compound breakout tool, we have a full set of bullish signals higher. However, we're starting to see a few signs of potential exhaustion. When I zoom in here, we can see Lulu today made a slight Bollinger Band snap. That is when the price exceeds or moves past the second deviation Bollinger Band, which are these blue lines. This one's the third. So you can see here the high of the price today exceeded the second deviation Bollinger Band and has already started to pull back. Typically, when you make a Bollinger Band snap, you'll see some sort of move in the price eventually to get back inside the second deviation Bollinger Band because that's the comfort zone. That's where the price mainly trades in the majority of the time. As we can see here, just as we're zoomed in, the majority of the time, the majority of these bars on Lulu have traded in between the upper and the lower second deviation Bollinger Band. The few times they've exceeded a move outside the level, we typically did not stay there for very long and saw some sort of pullback or consolidation to get the price back within the Bollinger Bands. So that's the first thing to note for today. The second is that we're closing in a bearish divergent bar, which we can see with this light pink bar as we see here. Now, this is an indicator that Eric helped create for me. I'm very thankful for it. But typically, when it makes a bearish divergent bar like this, it is a good probability that you'll end up seeing within the next bar or two a lower low compared to this current bar. Doesn't mean that the trend still isn't overall to the upside, but it does mean that we could very well see a pullback within the next day or two, potentially down to this 10 period simple to test support. The third thing I'll note here is this little purple carrot, which is what we like to call a top hat. And this is also starting to signal a level of exhaustion. Now, whenever we go back here, the only other time we've printed a top hat this year was back in June. And you can see here, not only did we make a top hat, but we also when we zoom in here, we can see we are also in a Bollinger Band snap, right? The price that day had exceeded the second deviation Bollinger Band. And we had a pink bar print, which is a bearish divergent bar. So another sign that we could see a lower low within the next few bars. Certainly we saw it within the next bar to go down and test the 10. It tried to hold there for a day and then reversed even more down to the 30 to test that level. So the overall trend I still like on Lulu to the upside. But because of these short term levels that we're seeing of a potential pullback within the next day or two, I wouldn't mind for today putting on a slightly bearish trade into the 10 period simple. Just recently, the last two bearish divergent bars we printed did technically see some sort of lower low. And notice how the last one we printed, the next day we did have a lower low right into the 10 period simple, but held it as support and then actually bounced up creating a bullish divergent bar, which usually means you'll see a higher high within the next few bars. And that's what we got from Friday going into today. But the fact that as of right now, we're making a bearish divergent bar into the close is a good sign that we could see some sort of pullback or consolidation the next few days for a move lower. When we take a look at the weekly chart here on Lulu, we can also see a very nice bullish trend that we've been in. But so far for the week, we're also making a Bollinger Band snap outside that second deviation Bollinger Band. And we're potentially for the week making a bearish divergent bar. Now it's still Monday. We would need to wait until Friday to confirm whether this was going to print a bearish divergent bar or not. But if it does, you could also consider a pullback within the next week or so uh, from this bar and potentially a retest back down to the 10 period simple, which in this case on the weekly chart is around 206. Now, like I said, the overall trend is still very strong and bullish. And we might just see a slightly lower low this week, or excuse me, within the next week or two compared to this week, and then bounce higher and continue to the upside from there. That's certainly not out of the question for Lulu when the longer term trend is still bullish. But 
Like I said, I wouldn't mind taking a very short-term bearish trade. So when I go over to trade here, the first thing that I would want to keep in mind if I were to take this action based off the daily chart, if we do close in a bearish divergent bar today, is looking at something like the November 29th, 222.50, 220 put long debit vertical spread. This is a very low cost basis trade, leaves me still an excellent risk versus reward, and it doesn't involve too much capital in my overall account. Even smaller accounts should find that on one contract, you don't have that much at risk here. Currently right now, the mid is at 93 cents, meaning on one contract, I'm risking about $93 of capital. My profit potential is the width of the spread, 2.5, minus the debit I'm paying, which is starting to move down some. So we'll just say, uh, to make it a little bit higher, we'll say we got in at 95. So 95 minus 250 means that my profit potential here is $1.55. So certainly not a bad risk versus reward on this trade. And any sort of move lower should put this spread in the money for this week and allow for a quick profit. Now, if you're going to hold out until Friday of this week to see if we get a bearish divergent bar for the week rather than just trying to take one for one day into the next, then certainly you would not want to go with November 29th expiration because that will expire this Friday. Instead, look at going a week or two out and considering a long debit put vertical similar to this one in that time frame. When we go back to the chart, it is good to note that earnings is anticipated to be on the 5th of December. So if you do go, you know, two weeks out, just keep in mind, you might actually just want to keep it to next week and try and close before the earnings announcement because anything can happen around earnings. So that's just something to be mindful and aware of. More than likely, if I were to take this trade today, I would be looking at putting it on based off the daily time frame for a pullback. Now, if we pull back to the 10 period simple and hold that level of support, that might make a great entry for a trade run into earnings. So we're looking at two different trade ideas here. The first one is mainly based off the daily chart. And that is the idea that we'll get a pullback within the next bar or two, which is why we're looking at a very short term this week, long debit put vertical spread. But if we do see some sort of pullback and it ends up closing the next day in a bullish divergent bar like we saw on Friday, right? Especially if we're holding the 10 period simple, we went down, tested that level it held and we're bouncing back up. Then that would make a pretty good buying opportunity for a bullish trade idea for a run into earnings. Because keep in mind, this is still an overall bullish trend. And with earnings right around the corner, it typically sees some sort of move higher into the announcement or at least an increase in the overall option strike value because of the uncertainty building in around that announcement, right? As we get closer into an earnings announcement, the more extrinsic value gets built into these options that are near term that are right after the earnings announcement because of the uncertainty that could occur here. Case in point, when we go to our weekly expirations, we can see for December 6th, next week's expiration, the anticipated move is 25.95. Going into that following week, it almost doubles to 49.55%, uh, percent, right? So it goes from an $8 move here to a 20 point move here. That's a pretty big jump from one week into the next. And that's because of the overall earnings announcement and the anticipation into that. So what I would do is I'd go out to December 13th because as of right now, it's anticipated that it will be December 5th, right? So just maybe give yourself a little bit of extra time. And you could go out here and either look at jumping into a long call to play for that increase in extrinsic value and run into earnings. If we do end up holding that daily support level of the 10 period simple moving average. So if we hold this level of support on the pullback and look like we're bouncing, then you could consider going out to December 13th, December week two for a long call. Typically I like a 0.7 Delta. So that's $17.67, not much open interest there either. So I could understand going down maybe for a smaller Delta, um, but the payoff on that of course is a cheaper cost basis and a little bit more open interest. In the case of the 220 strike, it's $11.45. Or if this is still too expensive for your account for a long call, consider much like we did with the short-term trade, investing a little less capital 
but still keeping that bullish sentiment for a bounce higher and looking at a long debit call vertical spread. So you could do something like the 220, 225, that's a 258 cost basis, leaves you a 242 profit potential. And of course, we're already $2.58 in the money, so this right now is basically all intrinsic value, and any sort of bounce higher should allow for a quick profit that way. The nice thing I like about both those verticals is clearly today we've already had a higher high than 225. So to get back up to, to those highs uh, going into the earnings announcement isn't out of the question and would put that spread all the way in the money. And at the same time for the short term idea for this week from today into tomorrow, today into the next two days, if we do see a pullback off this bearish divergent bar for a move lower, well, that first support level is around 215.96, so close to 216. On the put spread that we looked at, our short strike was the 220 strike, and that certainly would be in the money on the put spread to allow for a quick profit. So just to reiterate, there are basically two to three trade ideas in this video. The first one is very short term, looking at opening this into the close of market today with the idea that within the next few trading days, we'll get a pullback to at least test the 10 period simple. The second idea is based more off the weekly chart with the idea if we close the week in a bearish divergent bar, especially when we're at these levels, that we could see some sort of pullback or at least lower low into the next week or two, which could allow for a quick profit. And then the third trade idea is if we do pull back and end up holding support here, that might be a better opportunity for a longer buy for a run into the earnings trade. And I will note that if we do go down within the next day or two, hold this level and start to bounce, more than likely on the weekly chart, we're not making that bearish divergent bar, um, which is a good sign to then still trade this to the upside at that point with taking this trade here. So that's it for me. I hope this gave you all some trade ideas to look at or at least some educational advice around bearish and bullish divergent bars and the overall trend. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, may the trade be with you and I look forward to talking to y'all again next time. Bye.